What's going on guys? Today we are going to show you how to set up a drop shot rig the way I have been doing it in all my recent videos. It has become one of my confidence go-to baits and even more so in the winter time when they're hardly biting anything or just those days where they're very finicky and you can't get hit on those moving baits and uh, possibly even all year round for some of you folks in the northern states. It is just a go-to so we are going to show you how to rig this thing up very quickly. I'm going to show you what I like to use, how I like to rig it and uh, that will be that. All right y'all so let's get into this. Let's rig this thing up and then talk about how we're gonna fish it. So, drop shot, set that over to the side. Okay guys, for starters, you're probably gonna be throwing this on a spinning setup. Recommended throwing this on your spinning reels with lighter diameter lines, something like eight, 10, 12 pound fluorocarbon is fantastic, but I have just kind of upped the ante. I like throwing my bait casters around, so I really don't care. I'm going 17 pounds. Some people might say it's a little bit more visible to the fish. Like I say, I've been using it and having much success lately. So I'm using a little bit stronger line. I'm also using a bait caster reel instead of that spinning. Let's go ahead and show you how to rig this thing up. First thing you're gonna do is grab one of your hooks. So I've got the drop shot hook. You're going to need to tie a Palomar knot. At least that's the way I do it. There's probably many ways to actually rig a drop shot rig. You guys are going to be hearing the way I set these things up and have been setting these up in my recent videos. So you're going to put the line through the hook and then bring the line back through the hook to get your Palomar knot started. And so the goal when you tie the Palomar knot here on your drop shot rigs is to leave a lot of excess line. You want much more than you would normally tie your Palomar knot with. So I'm gonna wet the line so I can tighten this down. So now we've got the Palomar knot tied. We're just gonna make sure it's nice and tight. This next step is pretty crucial. So you're gonna want your hook ideally to be sitting like this in the water, the hook up. And so how you can achieve that is grabbing the tag end of the line and going back through the eye of the hook one last time. So what's gonna happen is we'll pull that tight and the weight is gonna be holding this hook in that straight vertical position. That way you can link up with more bass when you get those bites. So we have just finished up the Palomar knot. We have gone back down through the eye of the hook. The next step is to grab your drop shot weight. As far as what weight you might want, if you're fishing some shallower waters or if you're trying to be real discreet, you might use an eighth ounce weight. If you're trying to get out a little deeper, cast a little further, you might go quarter ounce. And if you're literally just dropping a drop shot straight down, fishing some deeper water off maybe a yak, the boat, then you might go with something heavier. That way you can just get down to your target distance uh, with ease. So for me, eighth ounce, quarter ounce, perfect for the ponds. And literally with these drop shot weights, all you have to do is feed the line through just a hair and the way these are set up is you just pull up and it will tighten onto that weight. So for me, what I like to do, just to keep things simple, I keep the line in one hand, I keep the weight in another hand, and with my teeth, I kind of grab the line and just pull it up. And boom, you'll see it is sent through that weight and it's gonna stay nice and tight and it's gonna keep that down there on the bottom. Lastly, you're gonna put whatever bait you wanna use for your drop shot. For me, I've been having tremendous luck with the drag and drop. Um, you guys can pick those up at Shop Carl's for $4.19 a pack. And I like to rig just the nose of it. Just the nose. So I just go straight up the nose of this drag and drop right here. Boom, barely hooked. That's how you want it right there. So what's gonna happen is when this is sitting in the water, the weight's holding it down on the bottom, but that worm is gonna be elevated. And you can choose how high you want that worm to be up there with how much excess line you use for your Palomar knot. So if you were to tie a real big Palomar knot, maybe there's some grass on the bottom of the lake or the pond you're fishing, you can keep this worm even a little bit higher if you have that weight down a little bit lower because you've used more line. So now we've rigged it up and how I work this bait is very similar to my Texas rig in that I just work it back with the rod as opposed to the reel. It's not like a crank bait and you're cranking this thing in and hoping one's chasing this worm. Again, this is when you're fishing slow and those bass are finicky and do not want to bite. They're out there freezing cold. They're not even wanting to hardly move. So you got to get this thing right on their nose and you can do that with the drop shot, which is why I find it to be ideal in the colder temps. So I'm working it back with the rod tip, just giving it those light pops, making sure to keep the line tight. Really all I'm doing with the reel is as I pop that rod and I'm bringing in, there's more slack that comes into play. And so I just wanna kinda crank it as I bring that rod tip back down, keep the line tight and then work it a little bit more, pop in it and then crank that reel a little bit as I, um, again, have more slack in the line. You wanna keep that tight because what's, what's gonna happen if you don't keep the line tight is that worm is just gonna drift to the very bottom and then at that point you might as well be using something like a Ned Rig or a Senko, uh, which is not why the drop shot is gonna shine. You get it right there, elevated, you know, six to eight inches right in front of their nose again and that's why they're going to get you that strike so for me that's how I work it nice and slow slow it down even more than you would with the Texas rig I'm talking about just keep that line tight and let it sit for 10 15 
30 seconds. Just kind of almost wiggle the rod a little bit and let that worm really do its thing and you're gonna get more bites. So that's Drop Shot 101, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I really have not even been fishing the Drop Shot very long, but now I have so much confidence in it. It was literally when I went up north to fish with AP Bass and for some smallmouth that I started really getting into this. They were hitting the drag and drop like crazy on this same setup. We were throwing some spinning gear, which was the only difference. Marshmallow, you can't help out with this video. I don't want you to get hooked, so you're just gonna have to chill for a second. And uh, the only difference was really they go after like the pink color and the blue color of the drag and drop as opposed to what we throw down here uh, for the large mouth, which is mainly the natural watermelon, red flake, and green pumpkin. Marshmallow, you really cannot have this drag and drop. Marshmallow is our cat, by the way. He was trying to like grab the drag and drop and he would have gotten hooked just like a bass. I'm telling you, it catches everything. So you just gotta be wary when you use this thing. So that covers everything, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. But did you know, according to my YouTube studio app, in the last 28 days, 73% of you who watched any of my videos were not subscribed to the channel? Weird.